Sobering news here for you. Wholesale inflation has seen its biggest month-to-month -month gain since June of 2022. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today the producer price index, or PPI as the cool kids call it, rose 7 point, um, yeah, sorry, 0.7% between July and August. It also increased 1.6% since August of 2022. And this comes only one day after the Bureau reported consumer prices also rose on a monthly and annual basis in August. And on the heels of consumer prices ticking up even higher, mortgage rates also inched up this week. Take a look. The weekly average for 30-year fixed mortgage rates grew to 7.18% this week. And as you see there, it's a 0.06% jump. Oh, no, you don't see it, but I'm telling you, uh, from last week. Alcina Lloyd joins us now to explain everything we've just seen. She's a reporter for Insider. Alcina, thanks for being with us. I know Freddie Mac, in part, attributes these increasing mortgage rates to rising inflation, but is that really the main culprit? What else is at play? Well, it definitely is that. Uh, the reacceleration of inflation and a stronger economy is keeping mortgage rates elevated, which has continued to reduce uh, affordability for home buyers as they see their mortgage payments climb. And I know it's worth mentioning um, that today Freddie Mac also reported the weekly average for a 15-year fixed mortgage rate actually um, slightly decreased, So, but it's still high. Right. So help yes. make sense of this for us. Is this a good sign for the housing market? Are things easing or, or not so much? No, it is. I wouldn't say necessarily that it's a bad sign, but what it means is we're still going to see home buyers struggling to afford home ownership right now. And because of that, we're going to see a slowdown in the market of them not coming uh, to purchase these homes. Yeah, because when you think about it, if you have a mortgage rate below, I think, 4% or 5%, as many Americans, most Americans do, why would you jump out of that? even if you get a good price on your home, to buy a new home at more than 7%. It's a real conundrum and there's a real supply issue when it comes to housing. So all those things considered, Alsana, how long until we can expect to see mortgage rates show a noticeable decline? Because I guess we wouldn't expect to see any shifts in that market until then. Definitely. It honestly all depends on the Fed and what they do with interest rates, whether they have another hike in the coming weeks. Uh, it'll make a difference in whether or not interest rates continue to rise or they decelerate. Um, that could mean, uh, let's say they do have a hike, that could mean mortgage rates remain elevated throughout the end of the year. But if they don't, that could still mean rates will come down, which might translate to a better and more healthy housing market. And from what I'm seeing, all of this is keeping so many young people, millennials and Gen Z, away from buying their first home because mortgage rates are just too high. They don't have the cash for the down payment. And so they continue to rent. So do you expect that to be kind of the, the trend for the, at least the rest of this year, that young folks will just continue to rent it out in big cities until home ownership becomes more affordable? Definitely. Housing affordability, affordability right now is at an all-time low, and because of that, a lot of people are opting to rent instead of purchasing homes, like you said. Um, right now, I know the average uh, uh, home buyer right now has seen the your mortgage payment increase about like $2,000. Because of that, it doesn't really look enticing to purchase a home right now. It's a pricey market. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Well, great to get this update from you. Alcina Lloyd, we appreciate it. Thank you so much.